Okay, welcome to the chemistry videos, and this specifically one is going to be looking at coordinate covalent bonds, which is a slight modification of a covalent bond. So just to quickly revise, remember a covalent bond is when you get two atoms sharing electrons so they can fulfill their outer shell. And we sort of say in junior chemistry to make sure they have a complete octet, and therefore feel stable, okay? And so uh, if we were to take, let's say, um, a good molecule that... Uh, we all know and love is ethylene or ethene. And if we were to draw the Lewis dot structure for those, we've got our carbon has four electrons, and over here we have four valence electrons. Now, of course, they want to share so that they have eight carbon, eight electrons. So this electron bonds up with this one. And so the bottom one bonds up, and then this one joins up with hydrogen. So there's a little dot there for hydrogen, and then here's another dot there for hydrogen, they join up. So this carbon here feels like it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it feels like it's got eight electrons, so it feels nice and stable. It's got a complete octet. But then we have to do the same for the other carbon over here. So we've got two other hydrogens there, those two share. And so this carbon here has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we called that a normal covalent bond. And so we have a single bond here, and then we have a double bond. Now we're not going to explore um, the more details of the bond in terms of a sigma bond and a pi bond, etc. We'll do that in a later video. At the moment, we're just going to keep it simple and just say we've got a double bond and a single bond here. Now they are co covalent bonds. The hydrogen has contributed an electron and the carbon has contributed electrons. So this covalent bond here is the sharing of two electrons, one from the hydrogen, one from the carbon. However, if we were to look at another structure, let's say good old water, then we have water here, and I'm going to draw, it has six valence electrons. Then we have our hydrogen. And of course, those two will share, so that's one covalent bond. There's another covalent bond. So at the moment, this oxygen here's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's nice and stable. However, what about when we have the hydronium ion? So the hydronium ion forms when another hydrogen comes in. However, it's not a hydrogen atom, it's a hydrogen ion. So in other words, a single proton. So we've got no electron here to form a bond. So in this instance, two electrons from the oxygen will go and make a covalent bond. And when that happens, we put an arrow to indicate that both of the electrons in that covalent bond are coming from the oxygen. And so that's called a coordinate covalent bond or a dative bond, depending upon what textbook you're reading. So this particular bond here is what's responsible for a hydronium ion. Now, of course, this now has this central oxygen so it has a formal charge of plus one. And so what we do is we put brackets around that and just put a little plus there to indicate that this ion now has a charge of plus one. So what's another example of a molecule slash ion, right? Because this is an ion, it's a molecule and it has a charge to it, so we can call it an ion as well. What other ones show this concept of coordinate covalent bond? Well, let's check out ammonia. So here we have ammonium, or I should say ammonia. So there's ammonia. So it's a uh, molecule where we have the two lone pairs of electrons up the top here, and this one's getting thicker by the second. So we'll just give it a bit of weight reduction there. So we have a nitrogen with a electron pair up the top. And so in terms of electron configuration, or electron distribution, I should say, this ammonia molecule, the regions of electron density according to the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, it's a um, pyramid stru structure, okay? It's got three down here and one up the top. It's not an exact angle as a tetrahedral um, molecule because, uh, tetrahedral, tetrahedral shape, because the space that these lone pair electrons take is a lot more and pushes these bonds down a little bit and so you don't have a typical um, tetrahedral arrangement. So we, we call it a pyramidal structure. Now, what happens when we have a H iron? So here we're going to be making ammonium, and ammonium has a formula, NH4+. 
And so same sort of idea here. This hydrogen comes in, so we'll draw it a little bit further down. We'll get rid of the little uh, line here. Okay, and these two electrons will then go to make a coordinate covalent bond to the hydrogen. And so overall now, of course, the same sort of case as we had with the hydronium ion, we have a charge of plus one. So this is another example of a coordinate covalent bond, a molecule that has a coordinate covalent bond. Now, of course, we draw arrows here for us to keep an understanding of where electrons are coming from and when they're going to. But in reality, if you had a microscopic eye, there's no difference when you look down there between that bond, that bond, that bond, and that bond. They're, but they're all co um, covalent bonds. However, from a chemical point of view, a chemist's point of view, we like to show the formation with an arrow to indicate that the electrons came from the nitrogen and were bonded to the hydrogen, right? And so we have a coordinate covalent bond. What's another example? Well, in HSE chemistry, we've got to know that one. We've got to go know that one. But of course, we look at another example, which is ozone. So let's draw out ozone and see if we can work out the structure of what's going on there. All right, so let's do... Let's do ozone. Now, ozone's O3. Okay, so ozone is an allotrope of oxygen. And it has six electrons in their valence shell. So let's put them in there. Now, I've drawn them in a particular orientation because I know where I'm going to be going with this Lewis dot structure. But of course, if you use pencil, you can just move them around. So let's see if we can uh, form some bonds. These two here will want to bond up, so we have a double bond being present there. So this oxygen here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that feels stable, right? This oxygen here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That feels nice and stable. What about this one there? It's all by itself. Should you like that one? Okay. So what's happening here is that two electrons from this oxygen come down and make a coordinate covalent bond here. Now what does that mean? Well, it means now that we have a charge build up on both of these two, something called formal charge. And this one has a negative, because so it has one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons that it normally had, okay? So it's neutral, but then when these electrons come along and spend a little bit of time down there, it means that overall this region is negative in charge because it has more minuses than what it did previously, okay? We can work formal charge out mathematically, but not in this course. What does that mean up here? Well, it means that if some of these electrons are now spending a little bit more time down here, this oxygen here is a little bit deficient sometimes, and so it has a formal charge of plus. So this is a Lewis structure, one possible Lewis structure for ozone, okay, and because we've got the arrow there, we're saying there's a coordinate covalent bond. Now let's draw another one because we could draw equally the opposite to that. In other words, this side here has the double bond. So this is just the reverse of that. So instead of the double bond being on this side, it's now on this side, in this molecule. So it can exist in two different forms. And there is a rule in chemistry called resonance. Now, in the HSC course that's currently uh, occurring, that we don't learn about resonance, but it's important to understand that this concept of resonance is why we have this um, possibility of writing or drawing two Lewis dot structures. In fact, resonance, I type to think of it, is that the bonds going backwards and forwards, flicking between a double and a single, double and a single, double and a single. So really, it's constantly changing between these two possible forms. If you actually measure the length of the bond, right? So we can measure the lengths of bonds by the middle of one um, atom and the next of the other. We measure the length of the bond called a bond length. We have a certain bond length for double bonds, a certain bond length for single bonds. What turns out to be is that the resonance structure is neither double, neither single. It's in between, it's a hybrid. And so sometimes in textbooks, you'll see something like this to describe a resonance structure, right? Where it's indicating it's flicking backwards and forwards. And the bond length is not a double, it's not a single, it's in between, okay? And uh, when you learn more chemistry, you learn something called bond order. We have different bond orders. 
But let's get back to the basics for our current understanding of HSC chemistry, is that ozone is another example where we can draw a Lewis dot structure for coordinate covalent bond, but in reality, we know it's something called resonance. It resonates backwards and forwards. So that's the three ones that you have to remember, okay, is um, hydronium iron, ammonium, and coordinate covalent bond ozone molecule. Okay, that's it for this bit's quick video. Make sure you can draw them. And um, in, in another video, we're going to explain how does the structure of ozone with its resonance structure and its shape change its physical properties when we, can, when we compare it to its allotrope oxygen. Until then, keep doing your chemistry, and I'll see you next video.